I'm Jeff Hemmings. This is Brian's Finest Radio Show, online, DAB, and podcast. Bringing the artist closer to you. Uh, yeah, new, new, new project we've got coming up. We've just we've fin- finished the album. Yeah. And we're, we've immediately started uh, writing for a new thing. So we've got uh, it's all coming together very, very quickly. So we're kind of um, yeah, we're, we're very on the ball about this one. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Well, I suppose when it comes to debut album, you've just got to look at yourself and like everything you've ever done and which bits are the best bits and which bits get cut and which bits stay and how are you going to present yourself to the world on all of this. You're ha- that's half the battle, isn't it, I reckon? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's what, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm told. I keep saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it, uh, it just so, I mean, it just so happens that I um, uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy the work. Because it's almost like it really does feel like riding the wind a lot. Like yeah. it's just sort of like it's you know if it happens it happens and it just comes together sometimes and other times it's a real struggle. How does it, how do you feel now about it? I know, I feel the same way I've always felt, which is that the thing that matters the most to me is that I like it and that yeah. we all like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's like it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to hear to hear praise and all of this, and we have we have gotten some of that, and God bless it. But it's just sort of like um, right, we feel very proud and the most important thing is that we we care about it and we're very proud of it. Yeah. So I just wanted to spread to a couple of songs of that, right? Um, yeah, sure, there's, sure. Uh, there's, a, there's a song uh, called The Giant Came Down. Yeah. And apparently it's an ode to a, a German folk singer. Yeah, Sibylaya. Who I know nothing Sibyl. about. Can you explain that? Oh. How did, how did yeah, you come so, across her? Well, uh, an ex-girlfriend showed it to me and maybe because of that and partly because I'm like a serious melancholy like junkie so it immediately intrigued me um when I first heard it because it's I don't, the melody is so beautiful she um Sybil Bayer in the 70s in Germany sort of recorded these songs to herself on a two-track uh tape recorder and years and years down the line sort of her son ended up giving these recordings to to family friends as gifts, and eventually they ended up with is it is it Jay Mascus from Dan- Dinosaur Junior? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they ended up in his hands, and he uh, he thought it was unbelievable and put it up in his record label. Right. And that I think that I mean that I mean that story wasn't necessarily why I got into it so much. I just love the music, but it does say a lot about what I think about it, which is that it's so selfless. Mm. It doesn't sound like it was recorded for anybody else. It really, it really sounds like she's just pouring her heart out. It's just about like everyday life, and it's it's so down to earth, and it's so relatable in a way that I think is so hard to find. And I absolutely fell in love with it. So that that song kind of plays in as tribute to that artist and what there is to be learned from her. I think your music though doesn't really come across as melancholy. I mean, there are hints of it. There's elements of it. But no, 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 yeah. You don't feel that way, do you, about your music? I take it. The no, music no, no, no. Like, yeah. no, no, it's very, I mean, we have quite a violent approach to these things, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, it's the kind of, um, I mean, the kind of thing I'll be singing about would be melancholic for sure. Yeah. But the way that it comes out is more, is definitely more of like a over-the-top catharsis. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty stripped back, isn't it? I mean, it sounds to me like it's just, um, it's the basic combo guitars bass and drums yeah and it yeah. feels it feels quite live in many ways as well it, can he is it is it live is it's part of it live or how did you what was the recording know, process it was um i don't know how much i want to shed the curtain about recording process i would say it would be um it, i mean it was really really important to us that the the, the natural feel of a lot of the bands that we were into when we first got into music like the 70s cbgb scene yeah, it was really those bands were really the ones that initially sort of took our hearts, and so that kind of loose, it's barely being held together kind of feel was really really important to us. So, a natural performance wherever we can get it um, is is in- incredibly crucial to our band. I think. Yeah. So that was that was definitely something we implemented. It was the performance, you know, came first. And how how it is that we managed to get that to that performance was just you know, our very talented um producers, Joseph Rogers and uh, Rupert Lydon. 
Well, good because it does sound it does sound raw and organic and live. Uh, thank you. And I, I think when I first came across you, there was that song "Speaker Face." Is that, is that uh, right? Yeah. Speaker Face, which um, yeah, yeah, which I think was you did a video of it, which was basically a live performance, wasn't it? Um, yeah. That was fantastic. That's uh, mm. I thought that was brilliant. And then you've done it again thank with um, a low flying dandelion, haven't you? Another oh, live yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of video. I think our our recordings and our live shows can often be quite separate. I think I think our live shows are considerably more hectic. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's in, it's interesting to sort of keep those two things in line with each other wherever we can, and a live recording would definitely help that. So I noticed that uh, you mentioned Jay Mascus, but and um, and I was reading my notes, and you you did some uh, shows with Black Flag, didn't you? Oh my God! Yeah, we did. And how was that? What was that like? Um, it was just I I mean when we first heard about it. The email came through and it said "flag, flag." Yeah. So, so, we, so we thought it was a tribute act. Yeah. And then, I don't know, we looked into it further and it was actually them. Yeah. So it just didn't. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. I mean, I'm sure when you're interviewing people and you ask them about their achievements and things, they say this a lot, which is that it's hard to process these things. But it's just, it really is. I mean, and and until um until I was on stage, yeah. is everybody ready to listen to Black Flag? And yeah. then that was when I realised we were doing it. I was yeah. like, holy! Shit. It's just weird how cyclical these things work. That yeah. after after years of being this band, we've managed to sort of come back around and play alongside this la- this band that meant so much to us. It was it was really incredible and. The kind of venue they were playing in was exactly the kind of venue I would have wanted Black Flag to be in as well. Yeah. With the same, with the exact same kind of audience, just like, uh, just American punk. So yeah. it was beautiful, and 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 the, we got on very well in that venue, and we got on very well with that audience. I'm not. I mean, we were always attracted to rock music. Yeah. But why it was we got attracted to American punk in particular, I, I couldn't really say. I mean, I remember that there's a record shop in Kingston upon Thames. That has um that sells singles for a quid, so we would go in there and just buy the coolest artwork. And I remember we came across um Richard Hell and the Voidoids, and we just I I think I think the album was a uh, or the single was I think it was I'm Your Man I think the single was by him. Right. Yeah. And it and it just it just absolutely split our heads open. And we got and immediately took to YouTube and whatever and found everything we could by him and it led us onto this bigger scene which included uh, Blondie and television and um, the Ramones and the Dead Boys and all that kind of thing through American punk we got to British punk. <laughs> the uh, I just wanted to ask you about another song of the album, Sharing Ahead with Seth. It's um yeah I I think it's when we first did our um, first few singles, Speaker Face being one of them. Um, we we were considerably more punk than we ended up being on the album. Like lyrically, um, I wasn't too experienced when we were doing those singles, so I ended up playing into a kind of character, or a character very much based on Richard Hell and, and all of those, all of that American punk kind of thing. Yeah. And it got and it got me thinking after those songs were released about how careful I need to be with the with the sort of character that I'm playing in music, I think. So sharing a head with Seth, I think, is a response to the character that I was playing and sort of that character I called Seth after a um, a necrophiliac in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> necrophiliac. I was, yeah, I was playing a video game called the Dead Red, um, Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. And there's like, a, there's like a necrophiliac grave digger in that called Seth. Wonderful. Sort of like wears like these big like ripped clothes and he's like this like creepy looking old guy. I was like, it's the perfect name. The uh, the album is called Mass. Um, why did you call, why did you decide to go with that? Um, I think Mass applies to just what music is. It's yeah. a sermon um, where people come together and sort of be in the face of this thing that they love and they come together and celebrate. And also, I think Mass has has ties with um, sacrifice and baptism, which I also think is something to do with our music in particular, having so much to do with catharsis. Yeah. Um, so I think Mass defines music in, in, in general and what we were trying to do with this album, which is have it be something coming of age and have it be something as a ceremony.